Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Had a Yard. Today we're going to be working on an Acura TSX. I have done videos on the Acura TSX before, but this is my very first six-speed. Yeah, that's right. The very rare six-speed. I got to one, and this one looks in excellent condition. This is exactly the kind that we're looking for, ones that are crashed, because that usually means that they were driving when the accident happened. Of course, there's a front-end collision here, but other than that, it looks like it was uh, kept up very, very well. If you look in the interior, it was all black leather interior and it was taken very well care of when I open the door here it's just dusty right so I think one of the windows is broken open and it just blew in here but you can see how well the interior was taken care of you know normally something like this would be cracked this is a 2005 the dash is all there everything is there the back interior is all there no rips no tears and there is an oil change sticker up there I saw uh, the last oil change was due at 144,000 miles that means this is relatively low mileage us Honda fans know that anything around 100,000 miles in our opinion is a baby it would be like a new vehicle as far as we we're concerned I'm pretty confident that this is going to be a tip-top pristine motor I'm really excited about it we'll open the hood make sure everything is there and uh, untouched unmodified it looks amazing under here very well kept as far as the accessories goes looks like the accident pushed in the alternator and it looks like the AC compressor is pushed in as pushed in also this one is a little bit different I was able to back up my truck with all the tools already there I do want to grab the trunk format and we're gonna put it down here so we're not laying any dirt this is a really good video for a tool that I have that I've been waiting to use so we got a five lug wheel we got a key wheel lock keys are generally something that's not left in the vehicle they usually clear out the entire interior I've noticed that most wheel lock keys aren't in the vehicle so chances are that's when they're removed but I have a tool just for a situation just like this so like most of the extractors that I use We'll just slide the tool up over the nut and this set comes with the driver all right so that means I'm gonna use this to hammer it on inside it will accept a half inch extension I'm gonna use that to drive the socket onto the lug nut and I'm gonna use my brushless my brand new brushless 1400 foot pound half inch Milwaukee impact gun this is brand new I did have a smaller one that had broken but I sent it back to Milwaukee they fixed it and I gotta go pick it up still pick this up in the meantime because it's probably a good idea to have multiple tools in case one of your tools do break down too easy these axle nuts are a 36 millimeter oh Come on. Okay, we have it on full voltage. Come on, 1,400 foot-pounds, let's go. Goodness. Goodness. That axle nut is on there. So it took out my whole snap-on half-inch ratchet. Look at that. Broke it right in half. Oh, man. And uh, didn't even budge it. All right, uh, it looks like it bent our screwdriver a little bit too. I mean, you know, I really shouldn't be too surprised that those broke. I'm trying to use tools that aren't meant for this job. Something that tight, chances are it's, I would need a three quarter inch breaker bar. And if you've seen those, those are ridiculously big. Um, but it looks like I'm just gonna need one of those things, man, because you saw for yourself how tight that is. So this is going to be interesting. We're gonna leave all that stuff on. We're gonna leave the axles on and I gotta figure out how to drop the subframe with all that attached. Disconnect the rotor from the subframe. There is a lower ball joint. This attaches to the upper control arm. Leave all that on there, which should work, right? So then the subframe could drop, leaving this there, and it'll leave the axles in. And that means I could swing these out, keeping the axles attached into the rotor. Maybe it's not so bad. All right, check it out. It doesn't look too bad. So there's our lower ball joint. We'll knock that out, and then you'll see our clutch fork there. We'll take those 17s out. Then we'll work our way over here to the exhaust. That's gonna have to be removed. As we drop the subframe, you'll see that's gonna catch on there. But check that out. Looks like they left our oxygen sensor in place, uh, but it does look damaged, so maybe, maybe we won't take that. I've had luck not having to take the cotter pin direct all the way out. You see it's kind of hard to get to. If I just clip the ends off here and put my impact gun on it, just work it off that way. <laughs> Looks 
it's like that one already came out. I was working on the passenger side first and this was the side that I was most concerned with because it also had the intermediate shaft. I was concerned how I was gonna separate the axle from the intermediate shaft, but you can see the boot there was already torn and everything fell out. I was trying to avoid making a mess. You know, that stuff gets everywhere and I don't want it on me, but check this out with it swung out of the way and uh, our shock disconnected from the subframe. I'll do the same on the driver's side. The subframes are a little bit different. It's disconnected from the steering column, so that's good. But look right here. There's some 14s that hold it on this side. There's gonna be a set just like that on the other as well. But on the transmission side, there's also a bunch of bolts that hold it to the tranny. There's a set there, and then underneath the axle over there. Those are the bolts that attach to the transmission, and I'm gonna use that smaller gun. Those are the bolts that attach the transmission to the lower subframe. Those are 17 mil. Hopefully I'm not covering too much. There, that's the lighter duty gun that I was using here. You see how, you heard how it struggled a bit. I'm gonna swap to the 1400 foot pound gun so you can hear the difference. A little bit different, right? All right, to accomplish what we're trying to, we're also gonna have to take off the tie rod, which also has a ball joint and cotter pin. You saw on the other ones, I was able just to clip off the ends of the cotter. Might be a little bit easier to see on this angle, and I'm able to just pry that out using the dexterity of the dike, and then just come in here with the impact. Moving on to the exhaust. They're just some 12 millimeters. Fortunately, these aren't too rusted, so you see there it came off pretty good. All right, so the oxygen sensor, it's gonna be attached here, broken off on the inside. We're not gonna be able to use it. I wanted to hang, hang the sensor from there because I, I wanted to use the weight of what's left here to help unplug it from the harness and then use the weight Ah, to help separate it like that. We're gonna be working on the rear motor mount. It's a big, heavy duty cast aluminum piece that straddles the steering rack. And there's four bolts that attach it to the subframe. And that's what I'm knocking off right now. And I'm using a lighter duty half inch gun by Milwaukee. This right here is rated at 450 foot pounds. It's probably about as big as my quarter inch gun. I mean, just barely bigger. It's nice to get into tight spots. Now, we're gonna be removing all this stuff up front. There is another motor mount back here that attaches the subframe. We're done as far as we can underneath. Now we're gonna move up front. I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna have to do to get this all out, but just looking at it like I had explained earlier, it looks like I'm gonna be chopping some of this stuff off here. Now it's gonna be difficult to get our blade into an area that is pushed up against all this other stuff here. So uh, we're gonna be learning this section together. Overlooking it again, we have an AC condenser and a radiator. And I think how we would normally do it if this wasn't crunched is pull the radiator out and then we might be able to expose, we might be able to get to the motor mount without messing with the AC condenser. But you can see that's all covering it. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hack this headlight bucket off, expose this core support, and I can open it up like a window over here. You know, you saw that I was able to make a window. I've had hoods follow me before. Depending on how heavy the hood is, uh, it could really hurt you a lot of cars end up not having hood props it's a it's a thing you know but I have something for that here I have an adjustable hood prop by blue point again something else off the snap-on truck you might be able to find this off uh, maybe a Harbor Freight by now you know I've had this since about early 2000 so you could adjust it to how high you need it there's a rubber footing on the bottom and the top so that it grips pretty well. All right, so it looks like the crash didn't mess up AC compressor. It's all good, we're not gonna be taking that anyway. It did push over our alternator and uh, I'm still curious to know what it damaged and it does bolt directly to the water pump housing, you know, so if that's something that got cracked, we gotta look real close. I don't see any water coming down, but maybe it cracked just the bosses that the alternator attaches to, which also means the water pump would be damaged anyway. So even if it does doesn't leak coolant, you can't get an alternator back on there. Now, that might be relative to what you're putting this in, if you're gonna be using AC, or if you're going to be using an alternator relocate kit, that's all relative, so that's a decision that you have to make right there on the spot. For us, I know what we're gonna be putting this in, and uh, that might not be a big deal, but we'll get a closer inspection once the engine's out. So we're gonna be removing things like the air box, the battery box here. What we're gonna be working on and focusing on right now is this motor mount. One, two, and three bolts here. We get these, these are all 17s, that's gonna be a 14 in the center. These 17s will come off 
and then this bolt right here is going right through the motor mount, which you can see it's already broken. Rigging on the subframe, you're gonna be looking for anything that might still be attached to it as we bring it down. Just moving some junk out of here. And I could see that the power steering line here is on here. This is for the power steering cooler. It looks like it's attached all the way around here. Um, now it will drop with the rack, right? Because it is part of it, except the part that comes and attaches to the body. So that's what we're working on right now, is making sure nothing's gonna get snagged. Now it looks like I could just take it off the front radiator support here, and then looks like there's one here, and it'll all come down in one piece. All right, so you see how I did that. In many of my videos, I show you that I work from the back and work my way to the front, all right? Because we don't want to get caught underneath there and have something fall on us. So if we were working in the front and then worked our way to the back, we would be underneath the car when that thing came down. And that thing is pretty heavy. And of course, anything else that's left attached to it, also heavy. We we'll want to stay clear of that stuff. Since we're talking about some type of safety, I'm going to show you something else. So I've been getting scrutinized about some of my footwear. Some of you guys out there are diehard PPE, and that means personal protective equipment. If if you know cell phones, that means they listen to you. Then, of course, right after all that stuff, I started seeing ads on Instagram or Facebook about uh, protective footwear. Well, check it out. I got a set. So here are some pretty cool shoes that I saw. They look cool. Have you seen these guys yet before? Check this out. These right here are steel-toed. They're mesh wear, so uh, they breathe pretty well. This sole right here, I could step on nails and it won't puncture. I think they're about 60 bucks. They breathe well. They fit like a shoe, and uh, they're comfortable. Moving forward, I did make a slight mistake and our cross member didn't drop all of the way uh, and when I say cross member I also mean subframe to me those are the same things but I'll try to be as consistent as possible so there's a heat shield right there that's still attached to our rear motor mount that's about the only thing hanging us up there it looks like a 10 mil I'll knock that guy off and then slide this out all right another thing I got a little over excited about I still have another part that right there is the power steering hose that goes straight to the pump it's still attached to my bad I've done this enough I should know better right here so it attaches to the valve cover back here two tens and then one ten down there then we'll be ready to get the subframe out we are back underneath the car and we're looking about we're looking to see what's left underneath here with the subframe out uh, we have the shifter cables right we're not going to take these it's the same as a cords and I have plenty of them but we do have to disconnect it we'll be able to do it up there but then it will still be attached to this motor mount so what I can do is just disconnect this motor mount all together so it's one less thing that's attached to it when it's coming out and then it looks like just our axle right and I might be able to do this right now holding the camera there it is and I'll just slide this whole deal out there just like the front there is a 14 millimeter that goes over there then you have this bracket that wraps around the mount well the rear mount was already broken too so when I disconnected that 14 I could just slide the whole bracket out of the way now you see the cables are still attached to it and hydraulic fluid spilled out of it this is huge and it could interfere with taking the engine out I want less stuff in the way there's four 17 millimeters that hold it in place they're big and they attach on both the block and the transmission. I'm gonna work on removing our accessories now. Now we can do this out of the vehicle or in the vehicle. Either way, we're not gonna take this stuff. I'd like to do it once when it's in the vehicle because it's easier to work with than on the engine hoist because then it's spinning all around and stuff. I found out this is just a little bit easier to work with. There you saw my gun wasn't able to fit in there. So I'll come in here by hand and I'll loosen them up. And then I'll take my 3 8 battery ratchet. Now I do that because my 3 8 doesn't have enough power. A half inch, they do have half inch fuel ratchets that I think is gonna be my next purchase without me having to do it by hand. With the accessories off, I took real close look at where you know everything attaches. I don't see anything broken. I don't see anything out of place. I don't see anything that looked like it had been leaking or cracked. 
Water pump spins pretty well. Looks like our tensioner spins well too. But check this out. Look at this mount right here. This is what I was talking about. When it gets in an accident on this side, it pushes everything over. And it looks like it broke itself from the mount. It doesn't look like it tweaked out the block at all, which is good. I've had pulled out a TSX like that before with it with broken out. The engine was pretty much useless at that point. So we're good on that. Now we're gonna move over here to the air box and all this jazz right here. Air box off, exposes our transmission. Now we're gonna get to the cables, but there was something I noticed I want you to look real closely on. All right, look, look at those cotter pins. There's two of them, All right? And they look new. Why would somebody replace the cotter pin? I have an idea. Well, let's keep looking. That looks worn, you know, the slave cylinder looks worn, and this thing looks all kinds of tweaked out. That doesn't look OEM. You know, Acura wouldn't let something like that leave the factory. I'm getting at that this might have a new clutch in it. You know, a lot of times when I get to these where they're manual, the clutches are done. And sometimes that's why they're in the yard, right? The clutch is done. They don't want to spend a bunch of money on replacing the clutch on this. You know, I could imagine it's about a thousand bucks, maybe just in labor because of the subframe has to come down. There's a lot of work involved. I do see that there's some missing bolts too. And looks like one over here is actually loose. So if I had to guess, it might have a new one in there. I'm not going to open it here to find out. But when we get it back to the shop, when we're doing all of our compression tests and uh, making sure the transmission's good, then we'll discover that. If it does have a good clutch, that's good, right? That's a little less money that someone's got to spend on whoever buys this. You know, it could be a project for me. It could be a project to somebody I sell it. Sometimes I don't sell the whole motors complete like this with the engine and transmission, you know, because it's a big, huge chunk. It, stuff like this usually sells better parted out. You know, somebody might want the transmission somewhere and somebody might want the motor. Selling them both together, I've noticed that isn't as easy as separating them. Usually what ends up happening then is I'll sell the engine without a clutch and a flywheel. That means I'll I'll keep it for my own personal project. And if I find one with a good clutch, I'm excited. I have uh, shifter cable removal uh, how-tos, uh, but these are a little bit different. Check this out, right? So those aren't held on by the little clips that get hammered in. Those actually are 10 millimeter bolts. And there's two on each. So the cotter pins come out, then those things will just slide up out of the way. Oh, those are really loose. All right, that one was, wasn't so much. So you saw that I used an extension there and I used my impact gun, it worked pretty good. But you'll notice that the extension was a swivel head or a wobble, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's an official name uh, from Snap-on. I don't know it off the top of my head. And there we go, it's off. And we'll just follow that up on the other side and we're done with the cables. We're pretty much ready to go. We have fuel lines, heater hoses, and the wiring harness. If you've made it this far, we don't need to cover that stuff. There's nothing really specific on this that we need to, to worry about. So you can disconnect the harness from the engine. There's no real concern on this particular one if you're doing a swap. Maybe somebody who's doing an auto to manual conversion on their car could use this stuff in the chassis when they find it. I am going to take the ECU. Now, normally on the TSXs, I wouldn't grab that. It's not really compatible with any of the aftermarket computer softwares like KTuner or Honda. But because of the rarity of it, I am going to grab it. It might be something that's eBayable, if you will, uh, for somebody who's doing a five-speed conversion in their TSX. I'm gonna make sure to grab that. Right here is where the factory air intake temperature sensor would be. Here it is, I already had it removed. You wanna keep this guy, you're gonna need it for your swap. It's gonna be relatively inexpensive getting it now than having to go source one new. I'm also gonna remove this throttle body. This is definitely something I'm not gonna be using at all in the future. Another thing I'm not gonna be taking is the starter. That is considered an accessory and they are gonna charge you for it. Why pay for something you're not gonna use? I know in most cases, these engine combinations don't sell complete. Whatever the case may be, I rarely sell used starters and I'm not gonna pay for it. Now, the reason I'm telling you this now is because maybe you're gonna try to sneak it through. It's underneath the intake manifold. Maybe they won't notice it, but maybe they will. Just do it now if you're not gonna take it. We do have ourselves in a bind here. This motor mount was broken and hard to get to. I started working these out and uh, this back one here is actually part of what my strap is attached to. So I'm going to stop what I'm doing there. I'm going to see if I can't just tighten it back in place. So that's tight and we're gonna figure something else out here. This mount is a hydraulic pillow mount and it looks like it could be broken. And if it's broken, then it might just lift right out of inside there anyway.
Not too bad, not too bad. Last but not exactly least, exhaust comes off. We're gonna take the intermediate shaft off while it's on here. You can see that it just spins and moves around here, which is why I like to take all the stuff off before it's on the hoist. And look, check that that mount was broken. You know, pillow mounts can be a dangerous thing once front and rear motor mounts are disconnected and the subframe's out of the way. Working underneath the car with those mounts like that is a dangerous thing because it could fall on you or fall down at any one moment. That's probably a good thing to look into before deciding to, to go underneath there before the subframe's off. Okay, so one of the last things I'm gonna grab right now before I forget, it's gonna be, bam, that thing right there. Now we have the ECU and the shift knob left to do. Now where is the ECU on a TSX? Because I don't pull the ECUs out of these, I actually don't know where they are. This is how we could find it. We'll follow the factory wiring harness through the firewall. There you could see it. So maybe just on the other side is where we could locate it. That puts it somewhat central inside the car and on accords. It generally is right behind uh, all these kick panels right here. We'll just go ahead and pull that stuff down to see if we can see it there. Uh, looks like someone's already been in here before. Look at that. And the cords sit right behind the carpet here. Bam, and there it is. One, two difficult as far as the shift knob goes this thing is so nice i see some red in here like on the r but i also see red on the two and uh, it's hard to tell if all of it's was red at one point maybe with a, a good washing we can see if it's all red in there but it looks like right down here that's a securing nut that's a 14 all we have to do is loosen that nut and spin the knob off and I'll try it out oh oh that was too easy look at that now the nut should should be able to follow. There it is. There it is, got the ECU. That's something I do is I mark the ECUs right away so I know all the information right off the top of the bat if you didn't already have the ECU codes memorized. Well guys, that's going to conclude our Howdy Yard TSX six speed. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to check out all our other Howdy Yard videos right here on our channel. We have a playlist dedicated to them. You know guys, we come from the Honda racing community so most of our Howdy Yard video series are featuring engines and transmissions that we use in our community. Check out our new t-shirts right here. These are our Hush Up and Race tees. This color right here we call Tahitian Green. It's a name dedicated to a factory Honda code. By the time you see this video, we're gonna have all the other colors. We're gonna have Milano Red, Electric Sonic Blue, Phoenix Yellow, Championship White. Guys, thank you very much. Make sure to check out our website. All the links will be down below. Make sure to check out our sister channel at VTech Academy. And like always, happy tuning.